Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. It's Rachel Lust here. And today I wanted to put together a little health and fitness type Q&A for you because I always get asked those sorts of questions on my Instagram. Now I can answer a lot of nutrition related stuff because that's what I'm studying, but some of the fitness questions I'm not qualified to answer. So today I have my boyfriend and my trainer, Bo Bressington here. Hello guys. And Bo has studied, what have you studied? List all the things. Well, first of all, I have dry lips, so it might be really weird for me to talk. But I graduated at the Australian Institute of Fitness in 2008. Since then, I've been a qualified personal trainer, uh, running my own business, first known as Hub Fitness, and now with Rachel Oss, we do Eat, Run, Lift. Um, I had the Diploma of Fitness, got a diploma in uh, Small Business, National Academy of Sports Specialist Training. Um, I've studied small nutrition courses, massage, and uh, I pretty much learned how to do a lot of rehab stuff as well from uh, my personal training and personal uh, injuries I've had myself and a whole heap of other little things that will help you uh, succeed in life with your health and fitness. <laughs> okay, so basically I put up a question on my Instagram and I was just like, if you guys have a health or fitness related question, chuck it here and hopefully we can answer it. So I'm gonna go through these and we'll just try and get in as many as we can and we're just going to be pretty honest about it, like not really beat around the bush or anything. So let's get started. Let's beat some bushes. Hmm. What advice do you give to foodies who love food as much as fitness but can't make it through a week without a few donuts and cupcakes? How often are you eating these donuts and cupcakes? I would like to answer this one and I'd like to eat this one too. <laughs> are you going to answer it? No. Okay. Well... I don't, you haven't really specified how much you're eating. I mean, you can still have cupcakes and donuts and, I don't know, pizza and burgers and things, but limit it. Pick one meal a week or we do two meals a week where you just eat whatever you like. And the rest of the time, make sure you're eating really, really healthy food. That way, if you're limiting it to those set times, you know you're not going to have too many because you can't eat too many in one sitting and you're not going to be eating them all throughout the week, which is going to undo you, really. And what I find with a lot of things like cupcakes and sugary stuff is that sugary stuff can actually make you store fat in really unwanted places. So if you have something like cupcakes, soft drinks, um, lollies, they're going to be really high GI. So there's no fiber in them. So they're not going to actually uh, be produced through your body as efficiently. So what happens is that they just turn in, they go through a lot of other processes, but do you know where they store? On your love handles. And that's not what we want. At what time do you recommend to exercise? Is it wrong to exercise at night? Exercise when you can. Exercise is, isn't about just strictly following a routine. If you can do that and if you've got nothing to hold you back, yeah, but sometimes you might be tired in the morning or tired at night, but some you might have a time where you're feeling really fresh, you've got nothing to do, just bang, get up, go do some exercise. Doesn't matter what it is, uh, just as long as you are doing something to start off with. This is for people that are trying to get into exercise. Do you think it's possible to still have a great fitness life but drink often? Yeah, of course, if you um, have a liver of like um, steel. No, um, if you're drinking, you, don't touch the light bulbs. I wasn't touching the light bulbs, it was just <laughs> in my eye. If you're drinking, you're actually stopping your body from recovering properly. Your body will slow down its metabolism because the human body would rather burn alcohol before it will burn fats, before it will burn carbohydrates, anything like that. So it's going to go to the alcohol first to burn that off and get that out of your system and then it will start burning what else is in there. So that's gonna slow down your metabolism and also it can slow down your human growth hormone. So it's gonna take you a lot longer to develop any muscle mass if you're drinking regularly. Like you drink every now and again, whatever, doesn't matter, but regularly is probably not very good. Oh, you, you'll like this one. How do you train your belly part? It's just not going away. Your what? Belly, like the little pudge. Ah, uh, okay, so this is a shout out to ATP Science who have released a, um, a supplement called CordRx. So anything that's a stressor in life, whether it's external, internal, mental, physical, um, can cause cortisol. And cortisol is a hormone that actually makes you put belly fat on. So you know how you get that little pudge that feels like a little ring around like the bottom of your belly? That's caused by stress. So reduce stress in your life 
um, and you'll see a really big change in your belly. It's time to work out after breakfast or should I work out right after I wake up? It depends what you're doing. So if I am doing weight training, I have to eat a lot of food first so that I have fuel. If you're just going to do cardio, it's okay if you don't have breakfast, depending on what your body's like. If you're one of those people who passes out when they don't eat, then have some breakfast. What I recommend if you're going to be doing uh, what we call fasted cardio is to have some branched chain amino acids so you don't burn uh, muscle mass. So we sell some branched chain amino acids on our website www.eatrunlift.me forward slash supplements. It'll be here in the description. I like doing that. It happens. Um, so when you take these, they'll stop your muscles from breaking down uh, and turning into glycogen, which will then turn into fat that stores on your belly again from cortisol. How many calories do you generally aim to burn per workout? As many as I can. A million. I, I don't count calories in. I don't count calories out. There's too much effort. I, I don't care. Um, I just try to work as hard as I can in the gym and eat as healthy as possible with the exception of my two, I guess, cheat meals. It's not really a cheat. Like I'm allowing myself to have it. I'm not cheating. But relaxed meals what are you gonna call that yeah. um so yeah just try and eat good and train as hard as you can when you are training don't train to get to a certain number because that's never going to be accurate anyway anything you're using to measure that won't be accurate and when you're training weights or something like that it's not about burning the calories it's about doing the getting workout healthy. and doing the routine and getting stronger and the stronger your muscles are the more mass it will be you're not going to be huge like a bodybuilder but the more muscle mass you have, the more calories you're gonna be burning while you're sitting on your bum on the couch anyway or on the computer. If you study nutrition, it would be interesting to see what you think of people's high carb diets. For example, Freely the Banana Girl. <sighs> let me take a second to talk about this. I'm because... just gonna let Rachel talk to me, I'll be back. <laughs> um, so, I don't know. I find there's different body types. Everyone knows that. So everyone is different. You cannot paint everyone with the same brush. Different things will work for different people, all that sort of jazz. If you are naturally quite a thin person and you want to put on muscle tone and you want to look, you don't want to look skinny, like you want to have some muscle, you need a high carb diet. Like that's just granted. In our Get Lean Nutrition Guide, you'll notice that the people who are naturally thinner, all their recipes have a lot more carbohydrates than any other body type. But in saying that, a high carb diet with low fat wouldn't work for me. I would end up storing too much of that. Even despite how much I exercise, my metabolism doesn't work that way. My body fat storage deposits don't work that way. So I have to have a different diet to that. And there's another body shape again who are the naturally pear shaped girls. They can't eat that diet either. So it does work for some people, but not for everyone. And I don't know, I find the way Freely makes her videos. I feel terrible after I watch them. She attacks people who don't have the same beliefs as her, which I really don't like. I feel like if you're going to have a platform, you need to be spreading a more positive message. You need to be helping people and not tearing people down, saying they're doing the wrong thing and just slamming their name all over the internet. But that's just what I think. My question is about the optimum heart rate I should be maintaining during circuit training and cardio to ensure I burn fat. I don't believe you should be maintaining a certain uh, heart rate zone. So imagine like you've got four levels or even three levels for a beginner. So you want to do a warm up one, which is going to get your heart rate up to around 115 and then something a little bit higher, like just do a little circuit, maybe two exercises together, it goes for about three or four minutes and then maybe bump it up to around 125 to 130 and then do the same thing, but different exercises. Um, so some, start with something easy, then something mid-level, and then something that you find hard. Something that's going to make you burst your bubble, nearly make you spew. Um, I don't want you to spew because it's, um, it will, it's gross and it, it will kind of take back everything that you've worked for. Um, and then bring it back down, or if you're hardcore, go up to around 150, which is your highest that I think you should be going at. Uh, because it all depends on and it's all relative to um, what your fitness levels are. How do you train for bigger glute muscles but a smaller waist? Part Dead of that lips. is genetics, but part of it's genetics mm. as well. Mm. Like if you naturally don't have a waist, it's going to be very hard for you to taper a waist. Mm. But the way that we, well Bo, <laughs> designed the Get Lean training program is to do that because we're finding a lot of girls really want that figure. So 
What I find the challenges is when people do squats, deadlifts, any exercise, that they don't know where to put the right foot placement and where the weight of disposition should be going. We have a video on that. Um, because if you lean forward a little bit too much through a squat, it's gonna activate your quads more than your glutes. So um, if you watch our video, we'll put a link. No, we'll put it in the description box. Put it in the description box underneath my, my chair. Um, <laughs> Uh, um, and it'll show you where you should be putting your feet and that'll help you get better glutes. Big bum, big booty bitches. How did you get thinner arms? How often do you exercise in a week? My arms have been like the bane of my existence. Ugh. Um, I exercise probably six days a week and two of those days include training my arms. I used to only do them once a week but I stepped it up to doing twice a week within the last two months. And we've found even like very quickly since I had my tonsils out, because do you want to explain it? You were the one that read it. Okay, so your tonsils, uh, if you have any sort of infection, can um, interact with your thyroid. And your thyroid gland, when it doesn't activate the T4, I'm just trying to remember off the top of my head, I may be wrong, but um, it, it produces more estrogen. And when you have high estrogen, as we've explained in other things, you can go back of your arms, around your hips and your thighs. and now that Rachel's activating more metabolism um, through her thyroid because it's not infected, she's actually burning fat on her arms faster. So that's another thing. If you want to get leaner arms, you have to reduce the amount of estrogen that is coming into your into your arm. You don't want too much. There, there is a line. So things like um, being on the contraceptive pill can be one of them. I'm not telling you to, you know, go YOLO and sleep with a lot of people without protection or contraceptive, but have a talk to your doctor and see if there's one that doesn't produce as much estrogen. How do you find time for fitness, work and personal life and not being completely exhausted 24 seven? I'm having some trouble with finding the energy now. Eat better food, that, that is like the key. Drink more water and eat better food. So we're talking lots of fruits, vegetables, whole grains, legumes, nuts, all of that sort of thing. If you're not fueling your body with the right food, you're not gonna have energy. My question is, when introducing supplements to your diet, which ones would you recommend introducing first? Well, it's a supplement, so what are you lacking? Mm. You, can't, you can't really give the same thing to everyone because some people get enough protein as part of their diet and they don't need a protein supplement. Um, other people need to supplement vitamins because they're not getting enough vitamins in their diet whether it's like B12 because you're a vegetarian or a vegan or B3 because you're depressed like and that's yeah. another thing if you are a vegetarian or vegan on the supplement side of things L-carnitine which is found mainly in uh, meats eggs fish all those kind of guys it's an amino acid it's an amino acid that can actually help you burn fat and give you more energy so if you're a a lethargic vegan or vegetarian? Have a look into that. <laughs> Would you ever consider competing in a bikini contest? I think she no. should. No. <laughs> Not really though. I would have to wear too much fake tan. <laughs> and those clear heels? <laughs> what tips or advice would you give for someone who isn't really keen with fruits and veggies? You have to eat your fruit and vegetables. What are you eating if you're not eating fruit and vegetables? Cupcakes. But Donuts. Tell, tell us what you're eating. The minerals that you need for your body to function are mm. in your fruit and in your vegetables. There's so many chemical reactions going on all the time in your body that you have to have them there or you're going to start to get sick. sick. So Fully sick. <laughs> not fully sick. Like really, fully sick. <laughs> Um, but if you don't really like them, try adding them into other things. So if you're not too keen on fruit, maybe in the morning have like porridge or oats or something and put some berries in it, put it apples, pears in it, and that's your fruit done for the Oranges. day. Um, well, if you only want to eat a few fruits, then and that's done for the day. Of course, you can eat more fruits later on as snacks. That's what I like to do. Or if you don't like vegetables, start adding spices to them, pop them in your other meals, disguise the taste at first if you really can't stand it, but you'll get used to them and you really need to have them. What rhymes with orange? Nothing. It's a, it's a, Q, it's a Q and A, you need to answer this. But nothing does, nothing rhymes with purple. What are your inner thigh exercises? That's one of my main problem areas and also muffin top. Deadlifts. I don't, yeah, I don't really have 
specific inner thigh exercises. My workout routine is following our Get Lean exercise program, which is what I was doing when I was training with Bo, but now we've just written the program into ebook form. I just pop it on my iPod and I take it to the gym with me. That's what I do. I follow the legs day in there. That's how I train my bum, my legs, my inner thighs, even my abs, really, like mm. my core. A lot of people ask me how I train my bum and everything like that. It's all in that exercise guide. That is what I follow. Um, and like I said about seven minutes ago, if I'm right, thumbs up for me, um, talking about your insulin, your love handles, that's all from sugar. That's how you're gonna get rid of those um, muffin tops. Is being vegetarian or vegan actually healthy? I want to be vegetarian for the animals, but everyone keeps on telling me that I might get sick. Thanks, I love your videos, thank you. Well, you're welcome. <laughs> If you are going to be vegetarian or vegan and you're going to do it properly, you'll be fine. You can actually end up healthier than when you were eating meat. Like your cholesterol levels will be lower and all sorts of good stuff like that. But if you don't do it properly, like if you're going to be one of those vegans who's just going to eat like tofu, coconut ice cream, tofu and Oreos, then yes, you will get sick. But with any diet, if you're following it wrong, if you're not getting the micronutrients that your body needs, you're going to get sick. How do I motivate myself to start a healthy lifestyle and stick to it when I've got a lot of other responsibilities such as university and work which occupies so much of my mind, time and energy? Let us tell you a thing. So, I am studying a Bachelor of Psychology and Advanced Diploma of Nutritional Medicine. I was also working a part-time job 20 to 25 hours a week and then I'm trying to run our blog, trying to do my YouTube and have a life and what were you doing? She And she was running my life too. Yeah. Um, I'll, I was the manager at Australian Sports Nutrition a Supplement Store. I was training 50 sessions a week. I play competitive basketball. I'm a DJ and I produce music. Um, and then I have to find the time to train as well. So if you're- And, and her, taking her out to dinner for <laughs> our cheap meals. But if you really want to be healthy, there's going to be a deep reason. You, I, don't, I don't know about you, but I don't think you should exercise to look a certain way because you don't know how you're going to look at the end of it anyway. Exercise and fitness should be about your overall health, improving like your lung capacity and your strength and being able to lift more weight. Like I know that I've lost weight and it's cool to look at and everything, but I'm way more impressed when I can pick up something really, really heavy and the guy next to me is only lifting half of what I'm lifting. That's more rewarding to me. And whilst uh, Rachel was talking, I was in deep thought and I got a little bit personal. Um, I know a lot of people make excuses by saying they've got anxiety and depression and stuff like that, but you know what? So do I. And so do millions of other Australians. And don't let that hold you back. If it's holding you back, go see a doctor, mm. go see a psychologist. And if the psychologist doesn't help, we'll look into Find it. Find another one. And then or find another, a, a different doctor, because it might not just be emotional, it could be something that's actually physically wrong in your like body. Because I have fibromyalgia, that's another thing that stops me, is imagine having um, glandular fever 24 seven, and arthritis 24 seven, depression, anxiety, uh, lactose intolerance, gluten intolerant, all these things. Showed into one. Into one, that's what I have. And like, oh, that hurts. See, it hurts just to do that, but I'm still fit and I'm still doing what I can. I'm not saying that I'm the most amazing person in the world, but I'm trying. Yeah. So all it is is about trying. And if you really want a healthy lifestyle, you'll find a reason that's greater than just looking a certain way. I mean, you're gonna get old eventually anyway. You're not gonna have like this tight little body. You're gonna get saggy. That's just, hey, gravity. But um, that's what's gonna happen. So find a deeper reason, whether it's because, I don't know, you have children and you wanna be able to see them grow up and you just wanna be healthy, or if you're like Bo and you want to escape your medical condition as much as you can, you wanna be as healthy as possible so you don't have to deal with that. What, it might be one point that sets you off and goes, can you beep this out? F I need to change my life. But I remember I was walking across the street and a girl that I knew took a photo of me and she sent it to me and like I looked at it and I'm like, is that what I really look like? I had no muscle definition, my belly was getting out of control, my posture was terrible and I was just like, shit, I actually have to go see a doctor. And then I found out that I had fibromyalgia. So these are things that you can do to, well, that you need 
to help you succeed with your health and fitness. Sorry that took a bit long, but it's true. Anyway, I hope this video, this is probably a, quite a long video. Yeah. But if we were able to answer some of your questions. Deadlifts. <laughs> Please give this video a thumbs up. We want to be able to spread this, I guess, it's, is it advice? I don't know, tips to as many people as we can. And thumbs up. I hope that we're able to help you anyway. Don't forget to find us on social media and I'll try and put all the links below. If there's something else you want clarification on, maybe leave us a comment. We'll try and get to it if we can. Later, alligator. And crikey, a little Mikey. I just made that up. <laughs> Well, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll catch you next time. Bye. See you later, kitty cat.